Uh, thanks a lot. Um, I'm Ed Blankenship, uh, the product manager for Visual Studio Online, and it's always fun having the uh, session right after lunch because not only are you tired, but I'm tired, and I'm on jet lag too, so it's even better. So we'll, we'll keep it lively. I like this one. Um, feel free to ask me questions anytime during this one. We're gonna, uh, if, if there's something you want to see that I haven't shown you, uh, just let me know. We're just going to keep this uh, pretty free flow f um, for now, and hopefully we won't have too much uh, stuff. But I already talked about a lot of this, so. Um, but vi I'm really excited about Visual Studio Online. It's been eight or nine years since I've been involved with TFS, and uh, my very early years were involved with actually setting up TFS and managing it and administering it, and I absolutely. Now that I look back at those days, it was uh, a lot of wasted time trying to get things to go. But uh, in the in this day and age, uh, you got some of the best administrators out there, which are on the Microsoft staff um, all around the world watching Visual Studio Online. And so we keep it upgraded, we keep it backed up, we keep it um, secure and and available to everybody. So uh, it's it's really a nice place to be now eight years later um, with having a hosted service. So um, I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier. We've also had some industry trends that kind of have gotten us to the point where we've gotten to Visual Studio Online. Um, and so we're kind of seeing pretty much a modernization of everything. Um, and uh, I don't know if, how many folks have been using Team Foundation Service before we became Visual Studio Online. Okay. Great. Um, it's kind of an amazing thing that we ended up doing where uh, we took our three-year releases and, and brought it down to three-week releases. So the Team Foundation Service team was really one of those uh, pioneers at Microsoft to get it to go really, really quickly. So we, ha we learned a lot, actually, um, to get it down to that point. So um, it's, been, it's been quite nice to be a part of that. So now... We do ship every three weeks. You'll get new features every three weeks. Um, there's actually a release tracker. I'll talk to you a little bit later that you can actually see our release notes um, from every three weeks. All right. So team Visual Studio Online. Whoa. All right. Visual Studio Online is all about, um, it's more than just TFS in the cloud. It's actually lots of um, services. And I kind of mentioned a few of those to you a little bit earlier. Um, were there any questions from this morning's session about any of those services? No? Okay. I have things to give away if anyone has questions. So I'm told to make sure. I think they're, I wish they were like Beats. Beats by Visual Studio. Be pretty awesome. But no, they're um, Visual Studio headsets. So we have plenty of them. I'm looking out for good questions. All right, how many folks know how to get started? If you know how to get started, then I won't show it. But I showed you earlier, there's a big green box, you just click it, sign up with your Microsoft account, uh, pick what URL you want, um, and then we'll actually have that to you in about 60 seconds. And so then you're ready to go, and then all you need to do next is uh, create your first team project. Um, and with that, you choose whether you want Git or traditional version control. So uh, everyone in here were, was at Martin's session earlier? You like the Git stuff? Like the Git stuff? You like the traditional version control stuff that we're doing with the Git stuff? <laughs> it's interesting because a lot of people, um, we, we look at the numbers every day of who's choosing which kind of repositories. And we still have a really large amount of people that still pick the traditional version control route. So it's still very popular. So we're not going to give that up. Um, all right. So I want to just kind of take you around um, the loop here and, and show you kind of uh, some of the stuff that we have in Visual Studio Online. So I mentioned, hey, there's no infrastructure you need anymore. Um, we have some services that you pay as you use now. Um, you can use those services in addition with Team Foundation Server without having to put all your source code in the cloud as well. 
Uh, it's pretty much available anywhere, so that's one of the nice things if you have teams that are spread out across outside of Austria. Um, everyone can get to it. You don't have to worry about poking a hole in the firewall or VPN connections or those kinds of things. Uh, we just take care of that for you. Um, and then we've got tons of features, though. We've got tons of features that help you out in lots of different areas. Uh, how many folks have seen the work item charts? Yeah. All right. Um, one of the cool things about being on Visual Studio Online is you actually get features before the on-premises customers. So one of the features we just put out, was it last week or the week before? You can now pin those work item charts to, um, to the home page. So you're getting new stuff all the time, and it's, it's really kind of nice. So let me just, um, I'll, I'll show you a little bit of Visual Studio Online. So let's see here. Uh oh. No. Unless Visual Studio is down. No way. Okay, no. Bing, Bing's down too. Unless we've gotten a big DNS problem again. We never have those, right? All right, let's see here. Oh, yep, yeah, sorry. You also. Good thing you haven't been able to see that because um, I'm not able to get anywhere. <laughs> Can I get to Amazon? Oh, there's so there must be a problem in here. All right, here we go. Let's try this. I'll just kill this. All right, let's try that now. All right, there they go. I can always remember my password. There we go. All right, so we're coming up to Visual Studio Online. Um, we've got lots of new things in here for you. So um, if you haven't logged in in a little while, you'll notice we have a few new things. So you'll see um, we've now got uh, meters for uh, the different kinds of services you'll see uh, application insights so if you haven't um, gotten a code yet go right there if you're really nice to me you can send me an email and I will give you a code so you can bypass the waiting list uh, but you'll have to send it to me in the next it's it's like those telemarketers do it you have only four hours to do it so send it to me in four hours I'll, I'll get you a code um, the other new, th new thing about this is uh, we'll talk a little bit in a minute about kind of user plans, but um, we have a new area called users. And you can go in and you can um, add those users. And right now, you can set up their license. And so one of the main ones is MSDN, so you just put MSDN. Uh, you can assign the free ones to the five free users you want there. Um, and then also we have uh, several other plans that you can do. Um, the main way that we deal with that is actually in, in Windows Azure. So when you want to set up and pay for additional services, um, and only then, you don't have to worry about doing it any time before that. So launch at, I hope that's the right one. Oh, I know. This is when we go to Chrome. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. <laughs> so, the w what we've done now is in um, in Windows Azure, we've actually made uh, we've made Visual Studio Online a first class um, part of that. So how many folks actually noticed several weeks ago there was this thing called developer services that showed up in Windows Azure? That, that was just us trying to be secretive. But now you can see right down here Visual Studio Online. And so um, what you want to do is when you do, if you do want to pay for additional services like 
uh, build and um, all those other ones. Uh, all you do is you come up here and you say new app services, Visual Studio Online, and then you can either create a new one or you can link to existing. Let's see if it actually figures that out. Oh, I don't have one. So what it does is it actually says, hey, um, the guy I'm logged in as, uh, do I actually have an account that's the account owner of that one? So we can help you out if you have any issues there. But let me go ahead and just uh, we'll create one for you here. Oops, there we go. So it's going to go in and start creating that for us, and then it'll link that up for us. Any questions in the meantime? Because this is a great time for it. Yeah? Yeah, so um, so the Visual Studio Online account, um, imagine it as kind of like Office 365, where you have kind of a tenant account. Um, you can have an uh, you can have a Visual Studio Online account for you, you know. So I have one like edb.visualstudio.com. That's kind of where I put all my personal projects and you know if I work after hours and that kind of stuff. But if I'm on a team, um, let's say Deutsche Bank, you know. Someone at Deutsche Bank would actually set one up and say Deutsche Bank .com. and so that itself is the account. So then um, the administrator at Deutsche Bank would actually go in to their Windows Azure account and actually link it up so that they could pay for additional users or additional resources that they want. But again, if you're an MSCN subscriber and you don't need anything additional, there's um, you don't really have to set this up. This is the point where in, when you actually want to say, hey. I want to actually pay for these additional ones, and we use Windows Azure for that. So you get one bill from Microsoft, and um, I'll tell you some more benefits about this a little bit later. Oh, I knew you would say that. Okay. You deserve one, and then I'll give you one for that. So the question was, um, what data center was it? Didn't you see the combo box there? Looks like you can maybe choose something, but I know. North Central. So um, the data center that we have is uh, North Central right now. That's just a point in time kind of thing. We're working on multiple data centers. So, uh, but for right now, it's just North North Central. But you might think that a data center in Europe might be an important one for us to have. <laughs> We're working on it. So, um, and then at that point, you just pick pick the uh, location. I. If 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 I knew when and I could tell you when, I would tell you when, because that would be pretty big news, wouldn't it? I, I'm the product manager. I can't tell you. <laughs> we'll we'll tell you at the right time. We'll tell you at the right time. <laughs> so I think the official answer is there's nothing we can um, there's nothing additional to share at the moment. <laughs> Go ahead. That's a great question. I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. That hasn't been implemented yet. So, no, I, I don't make those decisions. But uh, I can influence those decisions. I'll I will certainly uh, pass that on. I know that I know that the feature crew who does that work. So, it's a good question. So you'd want to maybe uh, change that from the VisualStudio.com site. I can I can see that. Yep. Especially if you didn't start in Azure. So now Visual Studio Launch is ready to go. Let's see, VS Launch Visual Studio. Oops. By the way, it, it was pretty quick when we did that. There you go. So that is all ready to go. We have um, all this here. Uh, you can see I don't have an account, a code yet for that, so you can see kind of what that looks like. And then our first step is to create a, a team project. So yep, um, so when you when you do that, you pick which one. We'll, we'll check to see if it's available or not. So, um, But now that it is here, 
I can click on it and uh, we can show you a little bit of what you've done so like how much you've used over time um, but here's kind of where you actually set how many additional users you'd like so you come in and you say hey I want 24 of these I want 10 of these um, and I want several of these and I'll tell you what each of these in a second yeah I'll tell you in a, in, when we get to it um, if you want to use more than the free amount of your of your shared services you just go in there and say paid 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 safe and then you're ready to go um, but that's it that's that's all there is in setting up and getting it going again if you're less than five team members or you have MSDN subscriptions and you don't want to pay for anything additional, you don't have to set any of this up. So you're ready to go there. All right, cool. So now that we have that, and we'll come back over here. Uh, now, we, now we can just uh, kind of dive in here. So you'll notice um, I'll open this one up. See all the the stuff that we get in here, notice I have a great team. We have zero bugs. We don't create bugs. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, uh, we've got our product backlog system. Um, the other one I didn't show earlier was the charts. So I'll, I'll show you that really quickly. Um, actually, I need something that actually has some, some work items in here. OK, sprint backlog. I'll take a look at that one. Yeah, sure. So, wh I'm sorry, what was the question? Yeah, so um, the question was, are they encrypted or are they not? They're encrypted. So, um, they are, in, you can even see this uh, in our version control system. So, we use HTTPS, SSL, it all gets back up there. We use uh, algorithm that um, dedupes and then we compress it and all that so we store it in a in a SQL database behind the scenes. Yep. Yep. Oh great great question. Yeah, so um, the question was, uh, with the free accounts or these other, I'll, I'll expand your question. Um, with these monthly user plans, how many gigabytes do I get? How much data transfer do I get? How many storage transactions? Well, since we're on top of Windows Azure, it's a really good question. W Microsoft has a bill that, um, our team has a bill that we pay for all of that stuff, right? The really cool thing about it is you don't have to worry about it. Y it's unlimited. So um, put as much source code as you want, put as many work items as you want. Don't worry about it. If you have MSDN, you're covered. If you're in the free tier, you're covered. So um, the only things that we will charge you for are the things that actually do cost us quite a bit of money. So you think about build servers, we charge by the minute. If you think about load testing servers, we charge by the virtual user minute. So, oh, was there? Is there a question? No. Yeah. So don't worry. Don't worry about that. You, it's it's unlimited. You you kind of your monthly user plans pay for them. Uh, all right. We we you may you may get me to the point where I have to write an acceptable use policy. <laughs> so thankfully no one's abused it yet, um, and we'll we'll keep it that way until we need to. So. Does Microsoft analyze the source code to know what? Uh, I'll tell you no. Um, <laughs> no, it's it's honest answer. Um, we're way far from being able to do something like that. But no, I think seriously, uh, no. Let me let me kind of. I think there's a meta question here. Like, hey, what does Microsoft do with my source code when we give it to you? Um, there are very few people who are, who are able, our, our terms of service um, uh, says that um, your data is your data. 
um, and we do not access your data unless you ask us to in order to help you with you know providing you a better service with with it so if you if you have a support case and you ask us to look at a very specific thing then we will and even then we have very very few people who actually have access to it I I actually can't don't have access to customer data um, in the production environment I think we I can count we only have like five people and then those five people actually have uh, uber uber security clearances and background checks and all that kind of stuff so we keep it it's it's very safe it's it's safe we keep it um, we have uh, we're, we're going through ISO certification right now so that um, when you we can give you our ISO certification results so you know what our security practices are and procedures but yeah we don't we don't look at your source code. It's a good question, though, and I'm happy to answer any more questions along those lines because I want I want everyone to know that they can trust us with that because, for one, we don't have enough people to even go look at it. <laughs> it, it would not it would not be worth it for us. So, um, but we've we've really tried to write that into our our terms of service so that you know that you can trust us with that kind of stuff. And even then, I know people still won't trust us, but just trust me. <laughs> All right. Any other questions there? All right, cool. All right, so I've got this. Let's see here. Um, okay, so I can come over here to charts. Ah, I've got one here. You can do all sorts of cool charts. How many people love pivot tables? Or is it just me? I love pivot tables. Pivot tables are so cool, though. There we go. Pivot table. Awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know. I'm I'm a little weird like that. Um, there we go. So you can create all sorts of work item charts. Um, what's cool about these charts is that they go right against the live data, so you don't have to worry about you know a warehouse updating or anything every two hours. So the question was, do I have to create this um, on the web interface, or do I have to, um, or can I create it inside of the Visual Studio ID? Um, and uh, it's on the web. So you'll actually, this is a good, this is a good point. Um, you'll actually see us move more and more of these experiences to the web. And so the m less and less of them will actually get put into um, Visual Studio. Or you, we may have experience inside of Visual Studio that it actually is powered by the web access part. But a lot of this is going to go in the web. Because we see people having lots of different modern devices and things like that where they won't have Visual Studio. Or if you think about it, we're really trying to help out you know, those Java developers who are using Eclipse or those iOS developers who are using um, Crap, what is it they use? Yeah, Xcode. <laughs> um, so so we're going to do more and more on the web. Is there a phone app for Visual Studio Online? Nope. It's a great place for someone to do something for. Talk to me. <laughs> I'll help you out. Um, be an interesting one. So, and I don't know if everyone knew this, but um, Visual Studio Online has the same extensibility as TFS. So if you want to use the uh, the TFS SDK, you can do the same exact thing with with Visual Studio Online. Yep. I'm sorry. What's the question? Google ID? No. So we support Microsoft accounts. We support Microsoft accounts. <laughs> there you go. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. So the chart is actually based off of the query. So you create a query first, and then you can create the charts. But then you can create multiple charts on those queries. And then you can decide which chart you want to actually go and say, hey, pinned a home page on. So did that answer your question? 
Okay, cool. You just wanted to ask it so you could get another one. No, <laughs> I forgot to last time. All right, so work item charts are kind of my favorite thing um, in the last few last few months, other than like releasing the service. So, all right, cool. Well, let's let's head back here. <clears throat> All right, so the next thing that I'm really hoping I can show you um, is Monaco. Is the code name Monaco, we'll come up with a different name for it. Um, but it, it is all around um, using a lightweight code, code editor. Um, and so let, I'm just gonna show you it. I'm gonna really hope that it works. What's this one? The 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 Monaco editor. Everything. So all of Visual Studio Online. Can you build an unmanaged project in in Visual Studio Online? Yes. Any more? Is it text based? Yes. You can use it with Visual Studio Online. That's the really cool thing about it. Yep. 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 So, um, and I hate getting lumped in that project manager category. I'm a dev tools product manager. I have to be, I used to be a developer. So, I know. I know, I know. It's, it's always what happens when you put that. Um, can I get back to you on that one? We have, we have a, I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about kind of what kinds of plans we have and that kind of stuff. So, I'll, uh, let's revisit that one. There is a plan for guys like me, which is Visual Studio Ultimate with MSDN. Just kidding. <laughs> Your sales guy told me to say that. Oh, yep, sorry. It's okay, I was just, uh, I was just logging in. Oh, ouch. You know what was funny, the other week, the other week, the Friday right before launch, um, we needed to get a lot of changes in. Um, and uh, so I go over and I'm talking to the Application Insights team. And I was just trying to get some changes in. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to I'm just gonna create a shelf set. And then I'll give it to the dev lead. And they were just so, they were so like, you know, I was like, Nice to be a dev. So, but whenever you get uh, a PM title, they're like, "Oh yeah, I forgot how to dev." But at least in developer tools, we're kind of we have to stay technical. All right, let's see here. Okay, so um, one of the scenarios we've we've enabled with um, the Visual Studio Online Monaco Code Editor is let's see here that's the one i want all right you can come over here and this is just an azure website by the way it's just kind of like is in the cloud yep Ooh, good question i don't know so the question was um will this work with solutions that are previous to visual studio 2013. i'm going to make a guess that it does all the way up to 2010 SP1 because that's when we we put in um, round tripping support. So I'm gonna guess that it does, but you know what? That's a really good question. Will you email me, and then I will um, I'll get you an answer. I'll have to ask the guys. There you go. Oh, it's uh, Ed Blink at Microsoft.com if anyone wants to email me with questions later. All right, cool. So the first thing you want to do, and by the way, this is still in preview. We're going to we're gonna keep working on this. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Is it there? I think it is there. No, where is it? I think I've already set it, so it doesn't let me undo it. Or did they do an update on Windows Azure today? 
Oh, I hate when they do that. Oh, oh, I'm on the wrong one. I'm on the wrong one. Okay. I was like, what happened? There we go. I was on a cloud service, not an Azure website. There we go. There we go. All right, we come in here to configure. So you can do this all today with your Azure websites. And by the way, if you want an Azure website that just has azurewebsites.net, you can get those for free. You don't have to pay anything for them. Just FYI. Um, it's when you want to actually have it be your own domain that you actually have to um, come up with one of the versions. All right, so here's what we do. We come in here. We say, hey, I want to edit in Visual Studio Online. So we'll go in and say on. Ooh. OK, I can't do that one. I thought I had one in here. My company visitors. How about that one? I thought I had one already on here. All right, so I'm going to turn this one on. Yeah, that's fine. I'll save it. We're going to update it. And then what will happen is, um, OK. We'll go to the dashboard here. And then you'll see the Edit in Visual Studio Online um, link here. And so what this does is it will let me actually edit the, the deployed code that's already out there. Now, why you would want to ever do this on a production site, you tell me. But this is a dev site, so we, hey, why not? Let's go do that. The other thing you can do is the Visual Studio Online Monaco editor actually lets you connect back up to a Git repository that's in Visual Studio Online. That's probably the way you want to go. Because then you can check back in, um, you can commit and push your changes back up to that repo. Then that repo can be um, tied to a build that compiles it and then deploys it automatically back to this Azure website. So that's a little bit better way. Um, and so you could do that. Now, what we can do is I'll show you a few things. So, uh, for example, details, or maybe detail. Did that come up? All right, there's a few things in here. So, like, uh, let's go to that JavaScript. So I can open it up. It gives me, you know, the nice view of, you know, and um, coloring and all that kind of stuff. I can create multiple windows here. And so maybe in this one, I can go, hey, let's uh, pull up. What do you want to pull up with your JavaScript usually? Your CSS. There you go. So you have your HTML, your JavaScript, your CSS all open up at the same time. Uh, we give you similar features in lots of different places. So, for example, you know, I can. It's it's uh, it knows about different things like um, IntelliSense for certain stuff. So let's say we'll make it Azure. Nah, that's not a good color. You know what my favorite color is? No. Goldenrod. <laughs> Don't ask me why. There we go. <laughs> the other cool thing is I keep noticing that I do this. How many people just like control S like crazy all the time? You don't have to with the Monaco editor. We just save automatically for you all the time. But I still find myself doing it. Yep. Yep. This is all integrated right in here. Now, uh, with this said, so I picked JavaScript on purpose because right now JavaScript is the only one that we have like really deep IntelliSense that we're like in the behind the scenes this is just TypeScript and we are actually compiling that in the background and showing you all the great things that you would. Right now with other .NET code we, we don't give you the same level of stuff but right now um, with Monaco being used to edit Azure websites this seemed to be the best um, set of scenarios for us to enable first. So, yep. A great question. So, uh, we have, um, the question was, um, how is this uh, behaving on slow connections and performing? Um, so, we built this 
for the scenarios where people want to use a modern browser um, in a lightweight kind of way. So it, it does work pretty well. You think about, you know, maybe being on a train with a 3G connection, you know, uh, just trying to pick up and make a quick change um, to your website and commit that really quickly. Those are the kind of scenarios we want to help enable here. We don't think that you'll be doing heavy duty coding. We don't ever consider this as a replacement for Visual Studio. It's just complimentary for those kinds of, hey, you know, you got a you got a bug come in. You might you want to look at a few things um, on the train and you fix it before you get here. So, how many people are going to do that when they go home today? It's okay. I don't blame you. All right. So um, I think. I'm trying to remember. Activate. No, nope, that's not the one. There it is. There's activate. All right. There's a couple things we can do in here. So um, with TypeScript, we can actually um, give you some information. So you think like, uh, there you go, or say VM, and then we'll give you like um, all the IntelliSense that you're used to in here. So um, we're able to do that with quite a few things. So it's really, it's really just kind of a lightweight code base editor. It feels just like Visual Studio because it was built um, with that in mind um, and then you can we'll keep track of all those changes for you um, back over here and then you can push those back to your repos uh, whenever you need to so any other questions about the Monaco editor the key presses or automate yep <laughs> all right I'll I'll go I'll go let the guys know that would be nice, wouldn't it? No, no. How many people would like autosave all the time in Visual Studio? And how many people wouldn't? Okay, I only saw three. Like, oh. Configurable. Everything needs an option, doesn't it? Man, that's how we get to Visual Studio. <laughs> all right. Now we'll, I will uh, take that back. I don't know. There are some days I don't know that I would want that. You should see the stuff I write. I'm a PM. All right. Um, so load testing is another one of those things that people have always told us, hey, I don't want to set all these like 20 servers up with setting all that. The other thing about load testing is you don't do it all that often. So even if you were to get the 20 load test servers that you need, you're not actually using them all the time. So it's really kind of a waste. So what we've done is made a cloud-based service. Um, you can take the load testing service and um, give us your load test and we'll run it for them. You just tell us how many virtual users you want and how long you want to do it and it's good to go. So we'll give you that data and I'm just going to show it to you. So let's see here. I'm getting the hang of it. I'm, re I'm remembering it. All right. So I'm going to open up Visual Studio here, and then I have a load test project already. How many folks have actually done load testing on premises with our stuff? Yeah, one. And why has everyone else not? Because it's not important? Or because it's too hard? Or because you don't have 20 servers? Yeah. All right. It's actually really easy. All right, so I come up here. I created this web test. So it's really easy to create web tests. You just cr say, hey, add new web performance tests. And this web test, all it is is I recorded it right from Visual Studio. I just went to the, the page and went over, did some things. Yep. So uh, web performance tests and load tests are part of Visual Studio Ultimate. All right. Then you can put in um, validation rules inside of here. And um, so it's, you pretty much got a web test and it's, it's ready to go. So then the next thing you do is you come in here and uh, you say new load test and we go through kind of a wizard and after that wizard you end up with this. So it'll tell you, hey, I want to do this, I want to do this. Um, and then, oops, here we go. And then 
you come here to your test settings and here is how you change it so we can either run it locally or with a, an on-premises test controller or you can use the Visual Studio online service that's all you have to do that is all you have to do so once you have that then you just say hey run the load tests and I'm just going to go kill that Azure website with a bunch of users really quickly so let's go we'll give it a couple of seconds here and then we'll start to get um, some details back from this oh come on Visual Studio oh how many people love this so always when you need it the most oh come on good time for questions yes you save from which country yep so not just yet um, so uh, from a low test standpoint we run out of the same data center um, but another place that we've done this with which isn't for load testing but we've done it for availability is we allow you to take the same one and run it using um, application insights from the 16 different locations from around the world it's the next logical step for us to do with load testing too and Visual Studio is not going to come back all right no load testing for you Gonna have to even kill it from this. All right, cool. Let's try that one more time here. All right, we're good. We're good. And I'm gonna run this test. And if it doesn't work again, then it's a bug. And I do know how to file a bug. Oh, come on. Okay. Well, here's what it looks like. <laughs> the PM does know how to take screenshots. There you go. Um, so that'll come back over time. The qu one, one thing that is different um, from on-premises TFS uh, with, with load testing versus the Visual Studio Online cl cloud load testing service is that normally we would actually have access to the servers that um, are under load so you know we'd be able to collect the the performance counters and all that kind of stuff but you'd imagine our Microsoft servers that are sitting in Azure don't have access to your servers that are under load so um, what you can do is you can now pair load test the load testing service with also application insights and you can gather lots better performance performance information for your servers that are under load from the cloud load testing service. So just FYI, you can pair those together. I'll talk about application insights in a minute. All right, cool. So builds, this is actually by far the coolest one. Um, so we have a, a build service that's just a build farm with a bunch of build servers in it. It's a pool of build servers. But the cool part about it is um, we will perform a clean build for you every time. So you give us your build, whether that's a gated check-in build, a continuous integration build, whatever you want. And we have a build image that we keep up to date every three weeks with, um, it's got all, all sorts of stuff. Um, several versions of Visual Studio, several SDK versions, like all sorts of stuff and we keep it up to date. Um, and then we will, we will configure a build server for you. It will um, do everything you want and then we'll kill it. So the next customer just gets a fresh one. What's your question? Yeah. Is there a, t a limit to the tests you can do with Visual Studio Online? In which capacity? The build or the load testing? Is it, oh, the unit tests? Um, so we actually include several different unit testing frameworks on those build images and if you've looked at um, 
the new Agile Test Runner, uh, we allow you, as long as um, they've implemented, so you think about XUnit and several of the other ones in Unit, you can actually use that inside of the Visual Studio testing framework. And so if you can use any of those, you can, you can use whatever you'd like um, with these. So I think I've answered your question, but let me know if I haven't. Okay, cool. All right. So then what happens is, um, so you can, you can use our machine, but there will be instances where we don't have exactly what you need on there. Um, my, my best, bet, my best um, advice for you is to take advantage of, of um, the cloud build service and the standard build images, but, um, and use NuGet. NuGet feeds will go ahead and evaluate those and bring those down on the build server. But it's, it's insanely fast whenever you use our build servers. But if you, if you can't use our build service because of something else, like you need something else installed on it or those kinds of things, don't ask me for admin privileges because you're not going to get them. Um, but what you can do is you can create your own build servers. So uh, you can create your own VM template, upload them up to Azure, connect those back up. You can host the build servers on premises. You can do whatever you'd like. So you can... Um, bring those up and though that doesn't have any additional costs for you to be able to do that So it's really easy um, when you set up a new build all you have to do um, is you come over here to the build controller and um, You just say hosted build controller and you're good to go that actually tells us to use that the other part about that is um, to pick this option, which is copy the output to the server. So we will hold the outputs of your builds right in Team Foundation Server as well. All right, cool. All right, the other um, component that I tried to show this morning, and um, I'm still trying to decide whether I should do something or not, but I'll, I'll think about it while I'm doing this. Um, is application insights. So we're going to collect telemetry from all parts of your application. You think about, hey, um, those, those mobile devices, you think about the web servers, you think about the database servers, you think about all the pieces. We're going to be collecting information to help you figure out where there are problems. And the, all that data goes back up to the application insight service. And then that gives you a 360 degree view of how your application is actually doing. I'm going to show you. And I don't know if I'm supposed to, but uh, since I couldn't get that other thing working, I'm going to actually show you. Yep. Uh, is this something like SCOM? I think it's so much more than SCOM, in my opinion. Yep. Uh, so it does availability. It also does... Um, it does performance analysis, but we're we're gathering lots more. But we're also doing usage analysis, and we're bringing all three of those. So you think about availability, performance monitoring, and usage an analytics. We're bringing all those together in one cube. But not only that, we're not bringing it into just one database. We're bringing it in the same database that has all the rest of your application data about it. So you think about your builds and your source control and your test plans and all that kind of stuff. We're actually just bringing it all together so that we can do some really meaningful stuff for that. Yep. So it's runtime analysis. Yep. As the question was, what is it um, compile time analysis or runtime analysis? And that runtime can be dev, QA, or even production. So. I see people actually using this. We've we have some really really large customers um, that we had in the in the private preview um, that were using it, including several customers internal internally. And you'd be um, really excited to hear about some of those, but I can't tell you who they were. So sorry. All right, um, I'm going to show you something. This is a dashboard of a very important service. <laughs> but this is actually a production site. So here we go. So I'm going to go in here. So this is. Um, 
this is um, a set of dashboards for um, for running service at the moment. So um, you can see we're getting some availability um, and some performance, and then we also start to see some usage information as well. Oh, there they go. So some good usage information there. So and we can drill out, drill into each of these areas. Um, one of the cool things about application insights is you can decide how much you want to change about your application. So for example, um, uh, if you don't want to do anything at all, you can do outside in monitoring and you don't have to change your application at all. If you want a little bit more information, you don't have to change your application, but you can install the agent, the Microsoft monitoring agent, and we will use that to actually get more information, but you still haven't had to change your application. Then if you want some more information, um, you can do some usage analytics. We'll give you a line of JavaScript that you want to um, make sure is added to uh, like your master page. Um, and then uh, we'll start to get usage analytics. And then if you want to go even further, you can use our SDKs. Um, there's lots of them available and we'll keep adding to them as we go through the limited preview. Um, but we'll start to get some more you, you'll be able to have um, custom developer tracing events, custom business metrics, whatever you'd like to report up. And then we'll have a, a log kind of mine where you can go in and mine your logs and search through them. All right, so here's some availability that we're seeing. I'm seeing some, okay, we're getting a few things in here. If I look at one of these, GSM test creation, okay. So this is, these are one of, these are our web performance tests. We're just reusing them in production. Um, you can see the several different um, data centers that we've chosen for this one. But if I were to come up here, I could um, choose lots of other ones if I wanted to. Um, and the, the frequency and then alert um, for how many we want and then emails can go out for those as well. But if I take a look, let's see, there's one right here out of Los Angeles. So I'm going to take a look at that one. I'm going to hope and pray there's a web performance test here, or web test result. Okay, probably not for that one. <laughs> How about this one? There we go. All right, so I can download that web test result and I can open it up right in Visual Studio and I can see exactly what happened. So from that data center, which, which data center was that? I think that was Los Angeles, right? I can go in and see what exactly it happened. So there's a, there's a request, there's a response. Nope, there's nothing in there. Oh, there's my response there. Some context information. We're getting lots of great stuff out of this, um, but you can do that for each of those failures and those test results. So you're able to, to get that kind of information from the availability. Um, I usually like to say, hey, my, um, uh, I'm on the dev team and I know before Ops knows that, that it's down. But the cool thing is I know before my customers know and that's, that's a really important thing. The other thing is um, performance. So we think about let me go back to, I um, always forget which one it is. There we go. Let's take a look at performance. So actually we're doing pretty well here on this performance. So it's more than just exception analytics um, and exception um, tracking, but we're getting all sorts of stuff. So we're doing things like um, percentiles. So percentiles are a really good way of tracking um, performance problems um, instead of doing averages or means. Um, so we're giving you the percentile view. We're also going in and we're going to take a look at all the dependencies that you have. So we'll, we'll actually detect when you're calling outside your application. So things like databases or other services. We'll actually detect those and then we'll start to give you information about how slow those are and that kind of thing. But if I take a look over here, I can actually look into, hey, what are the top 10 you know, slowest responses? And, and it'll actually... Um, It'll aggregate those, so you'll see, hey, here's, um, it, this has happened five times. And then I can take a look in here, so we've got one here. Now, I actually don't have um, access to the source code here, but I can 
hopefully come here and say download IntelliTrace, but I can actually look at what the s slowest node is in here, and then I can start to look at the variables that were passed into that one. So um, we're collecting a lot of great stuff, and this is all data from you know your dev environment, your QA environment, your production environment. So it's all great stuff in there. Now if I do that, there we go. So I can start to get IntelliTrace, and then I can start to debug this, and it knows what solution and project this came from. Um, so we get so we get some pretty good stuff in here. So that's performance, and performance lets us do all sorts of things. Like um, in this case, I don't. Let's see here. See here. Oh, there we go. Um, we can actually go in. I'm, I'm not seeing any in here, but um, we'll detect new builds for you, and then we'll actually let you see um, change history over time um, to let you see kind of what's going on in there. The final thing is, is usage. So we'll be able to actually show you how your users are using your application. And so um, if you have a web-based application, we'll look at kind of, hey, you know, what top pages you have, um, you know the number of sessions and then you can get things like um, you know if I look at the customers the users I can start to see you know what their loyalty is their frequency um, the number of times that they've come here in their engagement I can also report with the SDK custom metrics up here and you can turn any of these so you think about hey browsers let's see alright we have a good healthy mix of browsers here um, and I can take any of these and I can pin them to the dashboard and you can have as many dashboards as you like. Um, you can have one for the QA team, one for the dev team. You can have one um, for your business people. All sorts of different options for you there. So lots of great stuff in here. Um, do take a look. It's completely free right now um, while we're in preview. And uh, lots of good stuff there. All right, so the easiest way to get um, Visual Studio Online is um, a couple of different, we have a couple of different options. So. One second. There we go. Oops. All right. So if uh, if you're an individual or you have a team less than five, you can get it for free um, completely. And you get a free set of uh, minutes, 60 minutes of build every month. Um, it's included with MSDN subscription. So no cost there for you. And then we also have uh, three new cloud-only plans that you can have a month a month. So there's a basic plan, which I'll tell you what's actually included in each of these in a minute. Um, you get five free users. Uh, any additional users are $20 per month. Um, there's a professional plan, which is just the basic plan, plus you get the professional IDE. So um, you can actually rent the professional IDE from now on. Um, and that's $45 a month, and you can have a max of 10 of those per, per account. Um, and then we also have an advanced plan. So advanced plan um, is $60 a month. Now, all of these are purchased through Azure. And the cool thing about purchasing through Azure is how many folks have a commitment-based plan in Azure? No? OK. So you probably don't know about commitment plans. Um, if you will commit to a certain amount every month, we will give you a certain discount. So the lowest, um, and there's a couple ways you can do it. You can go direct, you can go direct to the Windows Azure site and just do it, or you can talk to a sales guy, and you can go through your enterprise agreement and actually get more discounts and have it attached. And then we can, you can put down a credit card, or we can invoice you. There's a lot of different ways, but depending on the amount that you commit to, the lowest amount is $500 per month. If you commit to $500 per month, we'll give you a discount. I think it's like 20% off. It's the lowest discount we'll, we'll give you. And it'll go up from there. Now, the cool thing about that is you get that same discount on anything you spend in Azure. So it's storage, um, bandwidth, VMs, websites, anything, including Visual Studio Online resources. So if you get you know, a couple of basic plans, a couple of pro IDE rentals, um, a couple of advanced build, load testing. That gets you to your commitment level pretty quickly. 
And then you get that same discount on anything. So you think about infrastructure or networking or anything. You get the same exact discount no matter what you spend on in Azure. And you can use that commitment toward anything. So it's a really cool way of, of actually getting to those commitment levels and give it, getting you um, a set of discounts. Now here's, here's kind of uh, at the high level what the differences are. Your question a minute ago was how do you, you know, what do you get a guy like me? Well, it depends what I need, right? Yep, basic. <laughs> there you go. So just take a look real quick. We also have this up on the website. You go to visualstudio.com, go to the Visual Studio online area. We have a kind of what we're known for is our comparison matrix charts, right? So, um, and if you have any questions about these, just, just let me know later. After your five users for free. So, um, but all your MSC and subscribers, they're going to be all free, and you get unlimited repos, unlimited usage of all that kind of stuff. So, um, cloud build, so it's um, five cents a minute after your first 60. Uh, cloud load testing, we actually give you 15,000 virtual user minutes per month for free. And then after that, it's 0.2 cents. So it's not two cents of virtual user minutes, it's 0.2 cents. And remember, these are all retail pricing. So if you get the discounts, you get the discounts off of that. And then in the future, um, we'll tell you about application insights and how we'll, we'll be doing that. Um, for anyone who is an early adopter before launch, um, you will continue to get free pretty much everything um, until February 11th. And I think we're actually going to extend that out um, a month as well. So you get everything. You can just set those, all your users to early adopter and there's will continue not to be any charges. And then also, we're technically in this period called billing preview. So Visual Studio Online is ready to go. You can use it for production. But we're testing out our billing system. So while we're in billing preview, you get 50% off of everything um, during that period. So we're in billing preview. Yeah. That's a great question. So the question from the chat was, um, are we able to host other source code other than Visual Studio or .NET? Absolutely. If it's text-based, put it in there. If it's, even put your Illustrator files, put your images, whatever you want in there. Um, yeah, color coding. We do um, IntelliSense. We do all sorts of stuff even for lots of different things. So if Put your iOS code, put your Java code, put everything in there. Um, we've got things. You can even do Java builds with the cloud build service. So we're putting a lot of stuff in there for your entire team. Now, um, to, to keep up to date, remember we are keep we are rolling out new features every three weeks. So um, feel free to go up there. Um, you can check out our release archive on visualstudio.com. On the new section, you, there's an RSS feed, but we also have this release tracker that kind of tells you every new feature and then for those that are using on-premises you'll know when you actually get that on-premises as well. If you have any um, uh, ideas for us that you want to see in there go to uservoice.com and we do actually look at that and we're just getting started so we're doing all sorts of cool stuff so really um, when we think about Visual Studio Online it really enables um, all sorts of scenarios and so uh, do do let me know if you do have any questions um, after the event. So, all right. Thanks a lot. If you don't have a Visual Studio Online account, you better get one. <laughs> and I've got one more. So, one more question. When is the break? Right now. All right. Thanks a lot, everyone. <laughs>